What is the value of dreams? Can dreams actually protect us and guide us to prosperity? As we look at dreams throughout history, we can see them in the scriptures and Old Testament, New Testament. Dreams are, are a common theme. And of course, as we look back in history, as we look at progress from Niels Bohr, a founder of quantum physics, who discovered the structure of an atom through a dream as he saw the solar system and wondered the next day if the structure of the atom did not operate by the same laws and principles as the solar system. And of course, as he tested that out, it did. And so it, there's a number of different examples that we can use throughout history, uh, including Nikola Tesla and Einstein, where these guys were utilizing naps throughout the day and they would ask questions and receive revelation through visions or dreams. And so there's just so many other stories that we can share, but really what about our everyday lives? Can we receive information that again, provides protection and warning and guidance, but also prosperity, invention, uh, ways for us to do things differently. I'm Ayn and, and I'm here with Rod. And today we're gonna talk about a couple of Rod's dreams and what they've meant to him and in his life. And so welcome, Rod. Thanks. Rod, I know that that is dreams. We've talked about so many dreams that you have. Seems like almost every night. I know they're not every night, but you have dreams all the time. Mm -hmm. And dreams have played a key role in your life as, as we've explored how many dreams you've had throughout your life. It's not just the recent times. And so I know there are a couple of pivotal dreams. Do you want to touch on, on some of those pivotal dreams in your life that have completely, they've either provided protection, warning, or, or even prosperity? Yeah, absolutely. One dream that comes to mind that I wasn't even planning on talking about today, but because I started dreaming as a kid, which, which we all have, and I remember having this recurring dream about my mom, and I would I was walking with her and I would fall behind her a little bit. And I don't know if I've told you about this, I, but then I would So she would start to walk further ahead. And then in the setting was kind of almost like if you've seen star Wars in one of those desert planets where it's all just desolate. Uh, and it's, they got like multiple suns or moons and, and it's really cool. But I would, I would be in that setting. And my mom, I'd be walking with her and then she'd get a little further away from me and I'd yell to her because she's leaving me behind. And I didn't have a voice. I couldn't, I couldn't walk faster. My energy would be zapped. And then my, I would yell for her and I didn't have a voice so she couldn't hear me and she'd get farther and farther away and then I'd wake up. So I wanted- this, this was a recurring dream you recurring said? Recurring dream. How, how old, and maybe there's a, uh, an age yeah. span that that continued to happen. Do you recall how old you were when you were dreaming? Younger year. So, so, you know, probably from, if I had to guess around five to 10, you know, like, like young. And then that, that but was a long like, span, uh, at least five yeah, years. Like I had that dream multiple times and I remember the feelings. It was like, I remember my mouth not having the energy to open and I didn't have the energy to like yell. And I would just kind of, get weak and I would just be there and she would keep walking. She didn't know. And I couldn't, no matter how much I tried, I couldn't yell and, and she would just keep walking and I would wake up, you know, crying or whatever. But I, I can see it in my mind so clearly. Imagine like if you were making a movie out of this, like you see your, the camera's kind of from behind and it's like the sun and the mom walking and it's in that deserty. Maybe there's a little bit of kind of a, a glow because the, the heat's coming down, you know, and maybe it's even a little bit dusty and they're walking. And then I, I can't quite walk and I fall down and she continues to walk and it's like, and I'm yelling and nothing's coming out. So it's, it's just sort of interesting. And I, I don't think I've, of all the times you and I have talked about dreams, I, I think maybe I brought this up once and we didn't really, and I didn't give a lot of detail because we were talking about other dreams, but that, I mean, this was happening at five years old. I remember this very clearly. And that's what was also, I don't know if it's a synchronicity or I, or because of watching the Star Wars, it was in that scene. But whenever I see that Star Wars, I don't even know what one it was. Maybe New Hope. And they're on that. He lands on this planet. It's a very deserty planet. Kind of reminds you of like 
you know, we're from Utah, like the Lake Powell, Arizona type, you know, environment. But mom just keeps walking. But we don't need to necessarily talk about that now. But I mentioned that story because it it just shows you dreams have been a part of me from as long as I can remember. And so along the lines of this, you know, can dreams protect us and guide us to prosperity? One dream that was really significant for me was, you know, almost a decade ago now, but I was in a career that was really stressful, uh, making good money. So it, so it, in my real life, I was, uh, you know, in my, in my actual uh, life, I was in this career that was very stressful and I was getting through it. I was, you know, my dad was helping me my boss was helping me and I was, I was getting things figured out just to kind of paint the picture a little bit. Life was just tough with my, with my family. We were away from home. We were in Connecticut, far away from, from home where we grew up in, you know, spent most of our time in, in Southern Utah, St. George. So here I am in Connecticut and I have this dream that, you know, I'm, I'm, basically saying goodbye to my family type of thing. I'm, I'm kissing my kids. They're crying. No, dad, don't go, don't go. And it was just kind of this, this situation where I was, I was leaving them and I get in this car and I'm going down kind of like a center street. That's going to turn into a, a highway. If you think of a small town and it's, it's downhill and I'm going and I realize I don't have any brakes and there's lights coming up, stop lights. I'm like, what am I going to do? No brakes, just trying to hit the brake. No. And so I'm like hoping that just the timing that the cars aren't coming through and I'm just missing these cars go all the way through the town. And now I'm through the town and on more of this highway. And I can see in the distance that it's a cliff and the ocean. And, and I'm going to crack, you know, I'm going to plummet into the ocean. And I look and I can see there's one more exit that I can take. So I, the, again, no break. So I, I turn off and, you know, the kind of the G forces are pulling me. I turn off that last exit. And it's a big parking lot. And I realize that if I can just continue to hold that wheel and turn, I can do like these Brodies and like, like spin out without going off the cliff. So that's what I do. And I'm able to just barely save myself. And so I wake up from that and I, I actually knew what that meant. Like when I woke up, I knew that I was on a road to nowhere. I was on a road to losing my family with the choices I was making. Um, it was it was pretty obvious what was what it was. And so then I made those uh, I made some changes. I talked to my wife after that. We kind of got on the same page, and we were able to make a career change and and do something that was ultimately risky. I right? like it was, it was risky. Like it was not logical what I was going to do. I remember talking to my coworker who was about to be my boss. And he was like, not a good move. Cause I, I asked for advice from him and he's like, don't do it. He's like, he's like, stay here. You have a sure thing. He goes, that's just me, but don't, but don't conflict do of interest. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like, come on, stay here. We got this. Like you're killing it. You're making great money. And the synchronicity that followed that. So I'd already had the dream, which was really obvious. It was like, this path means leave the family behind and, and lose all that. And, you know, and you've got kind of one more chance type of thing. So I was able to kind of correct course that way. But then when I was, I was, I, I don't know, just thinking through, I thought, well, maybe there's a way to still do it this way. And it was funny because not funny, but I had a thought, an impression came to me really, really clear. This was the synchronicity now after the dream, which was just came to my mind, support your wife, which is really what that dream was about. Support the family, like do, you know, put them first, support your wife. And then I knew that was my, that was my final answer. And I called uh, my boss and I just said, Hey, I'm done. This is what we're doing. So what's amazing is I didn't know if that was going to be a, a good decision and I knew it was going to be a good decision relationship wise, but finance finance wise, I wasn't sure. And it ultimately was amazing. We obviously different decisions needed to be made as we went through, but once I was all in, those things became more clear. And uh, we went from, you know, doing, you know, 
five hundred thousand in sales a year, um, up to over four million in sales, and that just even just the next couple of years, like things really uh, skyrocketed, and so that was that was pretty amazing. And I I had actually forgotten about that dream until you know I started getting more into this stuff, and I realized I'm like, oh my goodness, a dream is what set me on that path. That is incredible. And I've always wanted to be a dreamer. Like you hear about, you know, dreams and scriptures and things. Can you take him out, Asian? Um, and, you know, I, I was like thinking that's not, but that's not me. But it is me, which is cool. And so th then uh, another dream um, that I'll share is uh, about a health crisis we had in our family where our daughter was diagnosed with leukemia. This was in 2018. And, you know, we we basically knew nothing about leukemia. In fact, I'm embarrassed to say my wife, my wife and I were both embarrassed. Like it took us a long time to even know what she had because we didn't do blood work and we just didn't know the signs of what leukemia was. And we feel really bad about that, but we just didn't know anything. So she was sick and, and we finally got blood work done after like a week and a half or two weeks of her kind of not getting better. And she was still trying to play tennis and do different things. But that led us, you know, up to northern Utah, basically living in the hospital there on this chemotherapy, you know, protocol that wasn't going to give her a good chance of survival. And but we didn't know what to do. We were scared. We, were, we just we knew the doctors kind of, you know, knew what that was like our best bet. So. Olivia has a dream. About this she'd be admitted to the hospital for like two weeks at a time no, like 30 days at a time and then they'd give her a little break like a week or a week and a half off and then she'd go back in so you're supposed to do this five different times for the chemotherapy and on the fourth time which would have been the fourth time she had a dream that she died doing that fourth round of chemo and so she came comes to us and says hey i i had a dream that i i don't make it through this and i thought wow is that just her being scared and you know dreams uh, like does this really mean anything um but we listened to her and didn't go in i called the doctors and said hey we're not we're not going to go in and then you know we took a few days to kind of collect our thoughts and and said well we need to go do this this is the protocol this is what needs to be done we've got two more rounds of chemo to do and then we'll be out of here and she's doing pretty good and then as she's packing her bag she has this overwhelming feeling that i'm not this is going to be the last time i'm packing my bag leaving this house like i'm not coming back home and i'm like okay dream and now strong impression as she's awake like there's something to this so at that time we had had some different feelings about maybe going a different route like a more natural way to way to heal and done a ton of research. But again, even my doctor said, I was talking to him about it one time. He says, hey, don't do anything radical. So that was the feeling. This would be a very radical thing to do, not mainstream. Like, don't, this is your daughter's life in your hand. And she didn't have a very good, uh, the prognosis was like a, a poor prognosis, like a 20 to 30% chance survive, of survival with that type of leukemia. Um, it's called FLT3 ITD. And so the doctors didn't really have very good answers. But so we're, we're like thinking through this, like, OK, what, like, what are we going to do? And you can only stay away from the doctors for so long. I, I, I don't have time to get into that, but it's very like. It's very regimented and, and there's been parents who have taken their kids away and then Child Protective Services has come after them because you're you think, you know, better than the doctors and you don't like. I don't know, you guys can watch the Brzezinski documentary and all that, but it's it's insane. Like, it's absolutely insane. And it gets me upset even thinking about it. But what are we going to do? Are we going to do this or are we going to try to go this holistic route? And we had met some people that had gone the holistic way, but didn't really know if it was the right thing. And you just have all these different pressures. So my wife takes a nap that day. It's interesting. When you started this, you talked about the nap taking, you know, to get inspiration, some of these these uh, inventors and, and prominent people in our, in our history. So Katie takes a nap 
and she has a dream where she's trying to explain the protocol, the doctor's protocol, which was, you know, chemotherapy and bone marrow transplant and this whole process that we had explained many times to friends and family because we were very familiar with it. The doctors kept coaching us on here's how it's going to look. So we, in, in real life, we had explained that a lot. But in the dream, Katie's trying to explain it and she can't get the words out, you know, kind of like me screaming for my mom. It's like the, it's just not coming, coming out. And and then she's confused when she can't talk. She's confused. She has a stupor thought. And then after struggling with that, she just says, we're going the natural way. And that came out easily. And when she said that, she felt this very powerful feeling of love and comfort and peace and calm just kind of rush over her. And she said the way she explained it was it was like, imagine an embrace, a hug that is the most like precious warming hug you've ever had. And she said, that's just what came over me. So she woke up crying, tears of joy. And then she came in and told me, she goes, I had this dream and I, and I know, and she just is like, it, it means we should go the natural way. And when she told me, then I felt the energy and spirit of that. And I was like, that's true, Katie. What you just dreamt is true. And that's what we need to do. And not long after, I don't know if Asia, Olivia's younger sister, overheard us or what, but she came in and said that she feels like, like the natural way is the way. And then we had a lot of support. Um, just different text messages that came in, just the synchronicities of that, where I thought for sure my mom would not be on board with that. She, she would she would say, hey, let's just, I'm sure the health, the natural way is a good way, but let's make this a sure bet. And maybe we should just, you know, go with what the doctors say. They're experts on this. But she texted, again, this is all like not long after the dream. And she said, hey, I have a feeling that for what it's worth, I just want to tell you guys, I feel that Liv should go the natural way as well. And then Kevin and Rhonda had felt that who are Katie's parents. So that's a dream on getting direction for health. Now, I got to tell you, Olivia, all these years later, is doing amazing. She's on zero medications. She has zero trace of any cancer in her body. Her health is thr thriving. She is a normal kid. She's 19 years old. Uh, she's in Idaho Falls right now, but just amazing. And I know what the bone marrow transplant comes with. It comes with the host. It's not a cure. It comes with a host of medications and things. But again, in the moment, you thought, well, we wanted to at least live. Let's just, you know, do that. So, so thankful, like, for those dreams. Like, it's incredible. I can't. It's just so amazing that Olivia had a dream. Katie had a dream. In this case, I didn't have a dream. But I was able to feel uh, from their dreams and, and to know that it was that it was real. So I'll, I'll pause there. I have gone off for a little bit, but <clears throat> any thoughts or comments on that or anything I, I want to elaborate? Yeah, so, so familiar up. with so familiar with these dreams and, and that process. And, and I appreciate every time I hear it and, and can't help but feel the sentiment because the prognosis for even after the, the protocols was not good. And the toxicity, the doctors admitted to you that what was coming from the chemo would not provide for a very long lifespan anyway and, and not in good health. And so to hear how she is 100% rid of the cancer and, and is doing that, is living her life without having to rely on, on medications, um, truly, truly a miracle. And of course, it's not a surprise to us now as we've explored so much and in depth of the power of dreams. And really it's this divine guidance from, from God or, or some people might just view this as the universe is speaking to us. Nikola Tesla, as we referred to him earlier, uh, he believed that there was this core. He said, there is this core that provides strength and inspiration. And I don't know the full capacity of this core, but I know that I can access it and receive information from it. And so that's what, that's what he looked at it uh, as. And so we can, as we go into additional episodes, we'll talk more about what dreams really are and, and how they can, how we can utilize them with intention 
and, and specifically request information to be received through dreams because sometimes the conscious mind, because the ego is involved in our conscious thinking, sometimes what is right is what is right based on what we want to be right versus what is truly right. And so that's where the advantage of a dream coming from the unconscious provides that direct communication because some dreams are wild and, and they don't make any sense at all. In fact, for a lot of people, that's that's the only types of dreams they they experience. Whereas some of these dreams, Rod, provided to you such clarity from from your daughter's dreams and the dreams that your wife and, and other people had around that time that was just so clear to even you knowing back in that, that moment of the career change, you having the, your, your road would have gone a completely different path. And, and as you experienced it, it would not have been a life that it would have been a life that, that um, led to, I'm trying to remember the word you used, but but would have led to, to disaster. I mean, here it has you going off a cliff and going into the ocean. You probably wouldn't have died, but who knows? Who knows what what path that would have led to? And of course, you have the the hindsight now of of making decisions based on those dreams, and and having you know built a business because of it that uh, that has has provided a lot of blessings to your family. So, I want to talk, Rod, if we can, about about a dream that is more. Um, a little bit more recent and and also um, is not as as dramatic, but it's providing some guidance. And I just found this dream so valuable and, and so unique because in this one, you actually hear a voice and it says something very specific. And so I'm just going to send this over to this next slide. I want to talk about this. And I know that the, the figure that we see here it was not Yoda, but I put Yoda into this because of the way this phrase is. But but share with us this this dream. Give us a little bit of context and and specifically speak to what these these words you heard meant to you. Yeah, the context was I was at a lake. Um, I remember it was beautiful. There's big rocks, and it was just interesting. I was about to kind of walk around the lake and climb on the cliffs, and I was I was thinking through. You know how dreams are very real. I was there and there was a man who I was with and he was not like directly to my side, but a little bit behind me. And he was telling me about kayaking. Um, I can't even remember exactly how he, he worded it, but he was saying, talking about this documentary I should watch on, on kayaking. And I thought, Oh, that's interesting. And, and then he said to me that, so however that conversation continued to go, but the words came to me and I, I, I feel like, I can't remember if it was him that said it to me, but it was specific. The words came, be brave as Darth Vader is warrior. And I pretty much woke up after that. And I remember thinking that was very specific, like, that phrase. So I wrote it down and I, I'm like, I cannot wait to talk to Ayn to kind of break down to see what this means. And at that point, I'd have enough coaching and insight on dreams that I knew that numbers or specific phrases would be very important. So I wrote it down exactly as it was. And then that brings us to to where we are right now. So I I want to hear from you. So so Ayn, I, I, I share that with you and then we kind of broke it down. Is that enough uh, information? Yeah, and I remember the the morning that you shared the dream. I, I think it was the same morning that you had it, but you were looking at your notes, and I'm like, you seemed like you were like, I'm not sure if I wrote this down right. And, and you just you shared it exactly as you heard it. And again, we didn't we didn't think of Yoda because it wasn't a Yoda voice, and Yoda wasn't there in the dream. But the way that this phrase came through as you wrote it down and as you heard it, like you you reconfirmed, yes, this is what I heard. Be brave as. Darth Vader is warrior. It's written a little bit weird. Like if someone were to just say that sentence, it, it gives pause, but it does make me think of how Yoda talked. And why does Yoda, why did George Lucas have Yoda talking like he does in, in real form or in, in, in this question? And, and I'm going to separate the, the subject and, um, and these different parts of the sentence, I'm going to rearrange it. So so that it's it's different than way what everybody how everybody speaks and i see some value incredible value in that because what yoda is doing is he's causing people to think about what he says if mm -hmm. he says something completely different and so the same thing happened in your dream 
not only did it cause you to write it down because you knew how important if a phrase comes through in a dream to write that down, but because it's it's written or, or was spoken the way that it is, it causes even more curiosity. Like, what could this mean? And I remember that that as we were talking about the dream, Rod, you were looking up on Google, you're finding out, okay, well, what type of warrior was, was Darth Vader? Like, let me fully understand who Darth Vader uh, is as a warrior. Because again, it doesn't say be evil as Darth Vader is warrior or be um, focused. Cause even that focus could, could that might, that would have maybe a different, it definitely would have a different message than be brave as. And so as you looked up Darth Vader and, got some insight into his use of the force. What did you learn, Rod? I learned that he, yeah, because we did a lot of research on this. And, and it was, I learned that he was, I don't know, he's a person who like played full out. He was chosen. He he was able to use the force like like no one else. Like he like he was um he was chosen. And, you know, basically a leader, he was very confident in, 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 I guess, how he like conducted his life. And again, I know it's interesting because I'm like, why, why would he use Darth Vader? Be brave as Darth Vader. I want it to be like Luke Skywalker or something, right? But later on, we'll get into this. I had an experience that kind of taught me maybe why why Darth Vader was used. Um, yeah. Now if, if you don't mind, Rod, I'd like to jump into that because yeah. that's the other value. That's the other piece. And I know you, you talked about that a little bit about this impression that you had back that related to the dream of you speeding down the highway. That's going to go into the ocean. Later, you have this impression, this thought comes to mind. You're like, it's not a thought you created, but it's, it's um, sorry. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it was, it was, not make my wife happy. That's not what it was, but it was support your wife. Yeah. Support, support my wife. wife. Yeah. Yeah. So that becomes a message that comes afterwards and does that synchronicity. Yeah. And so many of the times we talk with dreamers that start to pay attention to their dreams. All of a sudden they start to, in their daily lives, they'll have experiences and moments that all of a sudden they'll remember their dream or a key piece of a dream will then just flood into their mind at the time they're having a conversation and all of a sudden the, the deeper meaning that they were looking for from the dream becomes so apparent. And so I'd like to talk about, about this event because again, it's not about the event. The dream isn't about the event, but the event is supportive of the message that it's trying to, the dream is, is revealing unto you. So uh, yeah. let's, uh, let's go to that particular. Uh, That particular event, which was a, a pickleball game, and, and here's a picture of Rod playing pickleball in all his glory. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, because you and I had talked about that dream, and and I remember getting good insights and writing notes and and knowing that I felt like that was the right interpretation analysis of the dream. And then I had this pickleball experience. A friend invited me to play pickleball, which I hadn't played in a long time, early morning. And really this friend I don't know super well, um, he's, he's a friend, but it's not like, like someone that I've known for a very long time. And then we're going to play with two other guys who I really don't know at all. I've seen one of them at a pickleball, uh, kind of tournament that we did. And then the other one was his brother that I, that I don't know at all. So it was that feeling, you know, when you don't really know people, you're kind of tiptoeing around and, and be brave as Darth Vader is warrior. When you're, when you're analyzing your dream, it's obviously the dreamer, you know, who I am and my life experience, that's what that's about, right? So to make that connection. So I'm a very agreeable person. I can be almost too agreeable at times and be one of the, the weaknesses I have is to basically tell people what they want to hear. And then I find myself in these situations where I'm, I'm just, I just don't want like any type of disagreement or, or confrontation. And so I met this pickleball, uh, match early in the morning and I'm partnered with my, the guy I know the best, my friend, and we're, I'm playing terribly. Like I just am, I'm just not, I'm not being aggressive and I want to make sure he's having a good time and, and I'm not getting in his way. And so I'm kind of tiptoeing around things. And then when I do get the ball and I'm, I'm making an error, 
but in my head i'm thinking oh we're here just for fun it's fine and like it's fine i don't think these guys are very competitive at least the guy i'm playing with isn't and so i'm trying to be polite really and let him hit as many balls as he wants and and after we're losing like three matches in a row or three games in a row he coaches me and just says hey you gotta do this on the return and he had recently had a a lesson that he had told me about and so now he's coaching me and i've played a lot more pickleball than him and i'm not bragging but i'm just a better pickleball player than he is it's just it's just the way it is i just have more experience with with uh, racket sports than him and so here i find him like coaching me and i'm thinking am i i'm playing that bad that now he's coaching me on how to play but really i was just trying to be nice to, and i'm just all over in my head i'm like what is freaking going on and it upset me when he coached me because i just am like i know how to play like you don't need to coach me and so i i did tell him i said no i i, I understand that i what well, he was telling me is to, how to hit the return i was like i was like yeah thank you i i understand that but really inside it was fuming so then i start playing that was towards the end of that game and so i started playing better with him but then we rotated teams and I, I went with uh, the other this other guy. And so now I'm playing against the friend who had who had coached me. And I am focused. I took that criticism kind of like a chip on the shoulder. And I realized like he has no idea that I wasn't even trying. He has no idea that I was playing nice and all these things. So then I start playing really hard. And I was no longer worried about my partner getting in his way as much as winning which I knew my partner would like, like, duh. And I said to myself, even if I do get in my partner's way from playing too aggressively and trying to take over this match, I'll know because I'll bump into him and it will kind of snap back to me. Like, hey, like, like make an adjustment. But I was going to err on the side of playing too aggressive. And I did. And we won. We played awesome. We played awesome together. He was encouraging me. I was encouraging him. It finally got to the point of like laughing again. But it was all about like, winning and there was even a play i remember slamming a ball like jumping up and slamming it and the guy who had coached me like fell down and i was thinking to myself like i was fired up i was like that was like a knockout punch like let's go and we just kept you know we kept going and we played super hard but what i realized is i came out of that and i i remember thinking about it i think i even took a voice message in my phone i'm like what just happened what just happened i'm like i was so concerned about other people's feelings that and i don't even know their feelings like when i first got there, i was so polite that i didn't want to overstep and 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 step on toes and do all that and i was the guest make sure you're extra respectful and all this stuff that i didn't even try i would i was making the experience worse by by not going all in and being committed and playing full out and it was actually hurting people more than it was helping them and and that was my opposite intention and so yeah, made, you're, you're playing you're playing small and then it's frustrating your partner yeah it's frustrating <laughs> my partner who then told me which then i realized like yeah i know that but obviously i didn't know that and so then i i get you know playing well so i remember just thinking about that like how can i you know the the quote the way you do one thing is the way you do everything and i thought oh my goodness where in my life am i playing to politeness and not saying what really needs to be said, really not telling the truth, not doing things that need to be done and just kind of hiding out. So I don't offend people or, or, you know, have these crucial conversations. Is that in my relationships? Is that in my business? Is that in my, I just started going down the list. I was like, wow, that's what it means to be brave is Darth Vader is war. If it's Luke Skywalker, it's not the same, right? How is Darth Vader? When Darth Vader says something, he means it like people and, and not that I want people to fear what I say, but I want that certainty and that confidence and that command of like, here's what we're doing. And so the fact that it was Darth Vader made so much sense. It's like, Rod, don't be so agreeable. It's OK to be disagreeable if it's the truth. Stand up for what you believe in. And I, I remember it so, so vividly as you were looking that up researching about who Darth Vader was and us having this conversation. Like if it was Luke Skywalker, it wouldn't have had the same meaning because as we look at Luke Skywalker, George Lucas tells this, the hero's journey, that story 
in so many of his characters. But of course, Luke Skywalker is that where, you know, he doesn't want to, doesn't want to accept the challenge in the beginning and then he accepts it yeah. and then goes through all those difficulties. Whereas this history, and I know we got this much later of Anakin and we, we learn about the full life of Darth Vader, but, but as far as Darth Vader goes, like once he became Darth Vader, like you talked about his confidence, like he never questioned his for the power that he had and, and his ability to utilize the force, like never questioned it, knew that it was there and wouldn't question. Whereas Luke Skywalker, we saw throughout his life, how many times, you know, he was trying to get the force and he's in that training period. But Darth Vader as Darth Vader knew at that point, once he became Darth Vader, he knew the force already had the force had experience with it and had that confidence that, that he was just going to continue to use the force, which is his true power. And so here, Rod, you're receiving this message. Hey, use the power that you have within you. Don't play to politeness. Don't, don't doubt yourself. Cause I think part of it is you remember um, some of that, the, the, the mistakes that you made early on was, was some of that doubt of, you know, am I going to, and part of that doubt is, am, am I going to, you know, come off as, as the show off or, you know, you were playing pickleball and it was okay. Once you got into the game, everyone started to have fun as everyone played at their highest level. And, and you were really the, the, uh, you were the, the catalyst in, in helping that game, of course, but, but really the game aside, it was the information that you, you asked yourself after the game, where in my life am I doing this exact same thing outside of that? And, and that's, of course, what the value of the dream is. The, the value of the dream, yeah, if you're becoming a professional pickleball player, then dreams may, may in fact help guide you to help you become better at pickleball. But, but this dream became clear to you that it is more. And every day, as you and I meet, Rod, we, we share different quotes and things that come up. And we utilize these as, as are they synchronicities? Because they, we share them as, as they are synchronicities as far as messages that we're kind of seeking out information and all of a sudden a message will show up that, that provides that answer similar to like a dream does. But, um, the, the quote that showed up that we talked about, uh, that very morning, as, as you talked about your pickleball game and we, we explored all of this here's Socrates. And it's interesting. The word force is in this particular quote. It is better to make a mistake with full force of your being than to carefully avoid mistakes with a trembling spirit. Again, th this message that you had received, like, where in my life am I playing small? And and here, it, here this is from Socrates, who I relate. I, I don't know if, if Yoda was created based on Socrates, but Socrates had an, another way of getting people to pay attention to what he said because he wasn't just saying. He was asking. He was giving – he was asking questions to help people think. And so by asking, he requires people to think about what he said. Whereas if we're making statements all the time, they can go in one ear and out the other, or we make assumptions that we know what it means. And with, of course, with Socrates, if you got one question, you were, you were bound to get several others on top of that to verify that, that he understood or that you understand what you're saying. And so we have uh, these two characters which, which by, by the way, Socrates is, is well known for his wisdom, but he's also well known um, in history as, as being this ugly figure, hmm. um, you know, very, very homely. Here's the statue of him. Uh, the hair probably blocks most of it, but he had this you know, really blunt stub nose and, and wasn't a handsome man. And you've got Yoda, who's not this attractive figure, but they're, they're sages and they have so much wisdom. And, and you hear this in your dream Again, even if it's not Yoda, you still hear this this sage providing you advice. And that's that's really what we want to touch on on today with this particular dream, is this archetype. Uh, there are a number of archetypes, and as they come into your dreams, you want to pay attention to them. And this specific one, the wise old man archetype, the sage. What information when when this particular archetype appears in your dream? And again, like with you, Rod, it may not appear as a, a physical person, although you probably did have a physical sage because I know you didn't have a real descriptive or clear view of, of who that person was standing just slightly behind and to the side of you that's guiding you on, on kayaking. But it's, it's right after that, that you hear those words. And I'm, I, I don't even remember if those came from him or, or those were almost separate, but here's this guide. And then, and then you get these words that come from, 
uh, from a sage uh, by the, just by the way that they were spoken to you. And so as, as you dream, we encourage you to, to pay attention to all of the archetypes, all the messaging. But when a sage is coming to you, be particular in, in considering that, that this is a mentor that is looking out for your best interest. And as we continue to explore the meaning of the dreams, uh, the ones that we have that are so clear, uh, you know, be really grateful for those um, because there are others that, that the dream seems to make us work. And it seems like that's part of the plan. And, and I, I absolutely 100% uh, believe that dreams are meant to make us work. Uh, that's why they come the way they do. They come as parables. They come as metaphors. And we're to look at our own lives and look around and say, what is happening in my own life where I can relate to this? And this is where sometimes you, the dreamer, me, the dreamer, it's difficult to understand what that meaning is. But sometimes an advisor, a guide that you can talk to, they'll be able to ask questions that will help you better understand and make those connections. So that's really what what we want to encourage people to do is write down every dream that you have, get the detail in there, the emotions that you feel, what were the metaphors, what were the symbols that showed up, what words did you see, what words did you hear, and how can you utilize those for warnings, for protection, for life changes, and and really, as you've as you've seen and as number a number of people have experienced prosperity dreams can bring us prosperity so any other insights rob that you want to share no i think that's it you summed it up great i i just every time we have these discussions it just makes me realize like how powerful dreams are it's such a gift i'm so grateful that i can dream tonight I can take a nap today and have a dream and i know that 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 is you know like it's just amazing so it's right there for us and as I talk to friends and family, you know what a common theme is, Ayn, that I hear is I do dream, but and I kind of get emotional even thinking about this. I do dream, but I rarely remember them. And it gets me emotional because I feel like it's it's this higher power, you know, it's God trying to communicate to us and we can't hear. And as kids, we hear that like, Hey, we always say our prayers. And what do we do? We just get up and leave. We don't listen. We ask for all these things and we say thanks. And then we get up and leave. And it, the dream's the same way. It's like we're getting up. We're rushed. We're checking our phone. We're doing this stuff. Journal those dreams. Write them down. It's coming from the unconscious. It's coming from God. Write it down. Take some time to think about it. And how sad is it that here we are so far away from the source, so far away from God. He's sending us messages and we just, just throw it away and go on to our to Google it or get on our phones. And so it's a reminder, even as we have this conversation again to me, it's like, hey, write them down, remember them, and spend some time at time in them. Don't dismiss them. It reminds me of uh, a statement that Marie Louise von Franz, who worked with Carl Jung, she talked about the importance of really pondering. So yes, write down all of the detail, the emotions that you feel, get all of that information there. And then, like you said, Rod, ponder it let's not be so quick to judge because as we continue to experience and as we talk to other dreamers and hear their experiences with the synchronicities that follow within several, the next several days, we may not have all of the pieces. So, so the first step is getting all that detail written down and then ponder it and then just start experiencing life and keep coming back to the dream, visit that dream, visit that dream and ask questions, get curious yeah. and find out what could this mean? How does this, what is what is the information that's trying to be communicated to me for my benefit mm -hmm. and man what when you talk about the emotion rod it's um i know i know you know that we both we both feel it because we're so grateful for the changes we've been able to make in our lives the blessings we've we've received from the information we've received from dreams so continue to dream and of course, write them down. We, we can't say that enough. Write down your dreams because we'll talk in future episodes about scriptures. And of course, there's, there's so many dreams that are there. But as we listen to Jesus and, and the words that he spoke, and as we look at the New Testament and we see where, he, where it is written that Jesus didn't teach the people except with parable. He only spoke in parable. Now, he did have separate meetings with his disciples where he gave them the plain truths, but everyone else, it was these parables. And when we think about how dreams truly are, these parables, and then we also look at some of the scriptures 
specifically this one that came to my mind, uh, Rob, we've talked about in the past, but it, it does come to my mind when, when you hear that comment, yes, I dream all the time, but I just don't remember them. I think about the scripture that, that Jesus says that, that he will come as a thief in the night. Mm. And we talk about, he talks about the different watches, the first, second, third, and fourth watch. And, and those were segments of the night that the Romans had already established. As you're recording your dreams, write down the time. If, if you happen to look at your phone or happen to see the time on your clock, you know, jot that time down because there might be some, some extra meaning there. But, but as we look at that, that message from Jesus or message of God, that Jesus is the way. So, so here's this message that's coming through the spirit, which that's what Jesus left us after he left. He, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave my spirit with you. So the spirit is giving us these messages, these dreams, and yet they come as a thief in the night. The message is there and then it's gone again if we if we don't really retain it and capture it. So uh, that's the importance of it. I know we can go on and on, but uh, and go into a lot more depth. But we'll for today we'll 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 stop here. If I can stop stuttering, we'll we'll will. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> and uh, look forward to more information on on future episodes. Rod, I'm super thank grateful for for you and that you are a dreamer. That, that you've been impacted, you've listened to your dreams, and you've taken action on your dreams. Uh, truly an inspiration to me, and, and I thank you, and, and we're just excited to continue to share the value of dreams with others. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.